What you're listening to is the deafening, frantic sound of people being gunned down in their droves on a Tuesday night in Chicago. Ken Herslick is a so-called night crawler. So trying to find the victim. In truth, a video journalist who monitors police frequencies. And in the blizzard of bullets, records each incident one by one. Ken, what's happening? Where are we going? Now we have a uh, supposedly woman in her 80s shot in the head. 5217. On the far south side. A woman in her 80s? In her 80s, that's what they said. Miss Clark's house was targeted because someone was after her grandson who was recently released from prison, according to neighbours. Neighbours like Anton Dobine, who are sick of what's happened. How many times has that house got shut up over the last... This is the third time. It's the third the last, time this third. house got shut up over the last... since when? In the last two weeks. In the last two weeks? Last two weeks. That woman is the nicest woman you ever want to meet. She coached us in Little League Baseball. She feed people. She does everything. She's about the last person that's the original on this block. It's crazy, ain't it? She ain't bothering nobody. When ain't nobody saying nothing. That's the thing in Chicago now. Who did the shooting? Don't nobody know nothing. It's kind of crazy. What they do know something, yeah? Somebody knows something. Somebody knows something. The person who shot Miss Clark has a less than 5% chance of being caught in Chicago. Last week, the mayor blamed a culture of cover up in these neighborhoods. So what? And as if on cue, our interview interrupts. So what? You gonna shoot me? Stand up and stop this shit. Don't condone it. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna continue to talk in front of the camera. You helping the situation? No. Why? Because you talking to the authorities? Why? Because you won't? Because you won't? Nigga, you a snake. I bet y'all ain't gonna do nothing to me, though. First, the good news. Chicago is a little bit down the league table of America's most violent cities. But now, the bad news. A couple of weekends ago, 70 people were shot in this city within the space of 48 hours, with 12 fatalities. The weekend after that, nearly 30 people were shot. The kinds of figures that compare with the world's active war zones. So now what, Ken? We're going to a uh, homicide, a female, I think she was in her 40s or 50s, shot in the abdomen. The report is now that she's deceased, so she's succumbed to her wounds. And we're in the Inglewood area in the uh, south side of Chicago. Neighbors told us that the woman killed was called Stella. She was in her 40s and a bullet came through the front of her house and hit her as she sat on the sofa. Her six-year-old son was beside her and saw it all happen. So the individual came up probably from around the side of the house and discharged the weapon. Andrew Holmes works the night shift for Chicago Survivors, a rapid response counseling team supporting victims and their families. With someone has to deal with it, someone has to do this job, someone has to talk to the people. You know, I've been through it, I lost my daughter, so I know what they're going through. So, you, excuse me, what I said, I lost my daughter, you know, two gun violence, so I know what they're going through, I know the pain. So, on a murder scene supporting people who've just lost a mother, a daughter, almost as an aside, tells us about his own. Two or three or maybe more individuals was fighting and shooting at each other when they started discharging weapons at each other and she got caught in the middle and she got shot in the chest and I lost my baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andrew Holmes represents the resilience of these neighborhoods in the face of violence. His daughter, Tamara Sword, was the same. You know, she had five kids. She raised them on her own and put them through school. That's just about it. She struggled with them, but she, she finished her education, high school, because she went in the management field, managed her own store, Kentucky Fried Chicken down there, just strong, single, African-American woman. That's it with her. The heartbreaking matter of factness extends to the neighbors observing from the porch to those who just keep watering the garden. The police tape coming down is Ken Herslick's cue to leave. Sometimes there could be a reprisal thing that might happen afterwards or something else, and I don't want to be on the block without the police there. We leave. 
the people looking for complex solutions to complex problems stay. Bernard Kippen, 18. Amari Brown, 7. Giovanni Matos, 16. For years now, Diane Latiker has been building a memorial to victims of violence in Chicago's South Side, opposite her home. DiCarlo Scott, 15. Marquise Harris, 16. She's around 500 blocks behind. We're losing young people, black, brown, children, teenagers, and young adults to gun violence in the city of Chicago. And there is no outrage. And when the families come here, that's what they want. They want their, their child to be remembered not for being gunned down and senseless violence, but that they existed. They existed. In Chicago, President Trump has a lot of work to do when it comes to persuading the people on these streets that he's a partner with convincing policy solutions. Their message to him, for a start at least, drown out the noise. Visit these streets, listen to these names. Cameron Blair, 16. Layla Stewart, two. Kevin Sutton, seven. Manuel Aguilar, four. Idea Pendleton, 15. 